<laughs> Hi guys, my name is Fleur, I'm from the Netherlands and I am 24 years old and I joined Nina on this trip who came up with going here. Yeah. I'm Nina, I'm 22 years old and I'm also from the Netherlands and we were part of the crew for two weeks. Yes, two weeks. Yeah. And we experienced a lot, we discovered a lot. <laughs> I think the most important thing why we wanted to be part of the crew is to have some hands-on experience. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we learned how to actually do something in marine biology. <laughs> <laughs> so that yes. was really nice. Because you study marine Yeah, I did a minor in marine biology, but it's a lot of theories and yeah, just listen to someone who tells you what to know about it. But it's really nice to actually see it and do it yourself. So yeah. that was really helpful. Yeah, and um, when Nina told me she was doing this, I was like, that sounds like a lot of fun, let me join. And then I actually had to write a research paper. And I thought, why not dive deeper into something you can find in this part of the sea? So I wrote a research uh, a proposal about uh, Posidonia and um, how it can be uh, conserved. And I thought it was so much fun and, and super interesting to finally see everything that I read about because I read a lot about also how they do all the, all, how they collect data and stuff. And in, when reading it, I was like, what are they talking about? And now we actually did it ourselves. So that was super cool. Yeah, that yeah. was really nice. I really, really like yes. to be on board. It's so different than that we used to, yes. but it's really relaxing it's to relaxing. wake up and there's water everywhere and there is sun everywhere, except yes. this day, but <laughs> <laughs> it was also a really nice experience. I think there wasn't a single day that we didn't go outside and was like, the water is so <laughs> blue. <laughs> Seriously. And, and you're basically outside all the time. Yeah except when you're inside the boat, but that just it doesn't happen a lot, mm -hmm. which is really nice. so many places we went. Yeah, that was something that we talked about today that I think if you would travel in any, any other way with a car or by train or something. You will never see so much. Yeah, you will never see so, so many spots. Mm -hmm. And that was really nice. Really nice. And I really like the stories of Manuel. Yes. I learned a lot about has, fisheries. Yes, he has some really scary stories. Yeah. And, uh, Ask yes. him. <laughs> yes. yeah. It's really the most important thing to do right now is to educate people. And that's why I really like that we went to the diving center. Yes. Because I think that will make a really big difference. Yes. I yeah. And I never realized it actually until then. Yeah. When, when we, we went to the dive center and uh, Manuel and Pinar and everybody, they talked about how, what the dive center can do for the place that they're diving in. And they were also talking about building an artificial reef, which mm -hmm. they kind of started on. Yeah, and educate and, all the people that are visiting them. Yeah, and what I found really powerful in that is that you have all these big campaigns and big organizations mm -hmm. that are like shouting that they that action is needed and that's what these guys are doing they they yeah they are actually educating people and making even if it's small it's something and it's not just shouting just no it's actually something. Doing it's something. actually doing something yeah. and i think i've never been part of something that actually did something yeah. instead of just the shouting part yes I mainly focus on the seagrass, as I told before. Um, and I was trying to find out because the Posidonia can both grow on the sand, but also on rocks. That's also what I read before. And actually in the two weeks that we were here and in the 10 different bays we were in, I only saw it growing on the rocks um, for a large part in only one bay. So I thought maybe this has something to do with the exposure or the wind direction. And um, then they, Pinar and Manuel basically told me something about how the seeds flow or float, float. float to the surface. <laughs> and then um, it's more kind of a coincidence where it lands. So it's hard to really put theory, I theorize that. It provides so many ecosystem services. I think the the most important two are that 
it's a huge carbon sink and that is um, like we have the tropical rainforest it, it just holds a lot of uh, carbon it pulls out of the atmosphere and um, that also means that if we lose the sea grasses that the, that carbon that is stored in the sediment underneath it that will also be released again and um, if we want to prevent climate change that's not a thing that we want um, uh, and the other thing was that it is a protected species right no oh yeah also but because it uh, nurtures um, it is the home of a lot of animals I think it was one fourth of all the species that we have in the sea spend one part of its life in seagrass either as a baby or as a <laughs> big one or, um, so that means that if it, if, if it isn't there anymore it will yeah it, those species might, might die as well so that's I think the most important too mm -hmm. People need to learn about it. People need to know about it. The biggest threat to seagrass is that people just don't know what it is and they don't know that it why it's so important. And I think that why it that's why it gets overlooked in a lot of conservation plans and management plans for coastal development and stuff. So if they would people would be more aware of it then um, it would maybe give it a, you know, a better, a bigger place in, in such plants. But what you can do as just a person enjoying the sea is um, if you go sailing, don't put your anchor in it because the anchor will drag all the seagrass out. And also just don't litter, but that's basically for anything in the ocean that is nice. Just don't leave your plastic around in there or anything. And um, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing you can do on an individual level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have looked into the uh, Aplacina Arefoba. I can show you here. It's also known as the golden this sponge. One? This one, it's a yellow, shiny sponge. And uh, we see it actually in every bay. So I was wondering why in some bays you see a lot of them and uh, in some places you just see a little bit. So I dived into that and I was thinking about um, some theories and one of them was the wind directions that maybe have an influence on where you can find them. And um, we were thinking about the north wind in the summer, if I'm right, <laughs> and the south wind in the winter if that has any effect on where they are. But uh, based on the observation that I made, I'm not exactly sure because um, we've seen a lot of bays and they not uh, have all the same exposure sites. So we definitely have to look more in more detail to that and more bays. And what also could be uh, a theory is the sunlight because the sponge live in symbiosis with algae. So that's why they need sunlight to actually grow. Uh, but they're also in competition with other algae that are in the in the bay. Um, so it's really difficult to really discover why there is a lot of them or not. But that could be a possible explanation that they uh, not really they can be really deep in the ocean because they need the light, but also not too shallow, so the wind is not dragging them out. Um, so yeah, I think that sunlight is a really important part of why the sponge occurs in some places and why not. Something else. Oh, a fun fact about, a fun fact, I don't know if it's fun, <laughs> but uh, they, are, they are called uh, idophoba because they are afraid of uh, air and exact, uh, the oxygen. And we think it's because of some bacteria that live in there. And if they are in contact with oxygen, the whole sponge uh, turns black. So that is interesting. I think it is interesting. Yeah. Another interesting fact is that we saw the sponge on a crab. Yeah. And it was and walking. And it, <laughs> it was walking. It was cool. nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. Good vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Other than the night boat, what was your favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> Our favorite part was taking the sub and every shower time. on land. <laughs> <laughs> and then getting wet while going with the sub to the land yeah. and 
Bye. 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 Bye.